Cheers, guys. Epix here. Welcome to episode 11 of the VR show. If you can believe it, it's been 11 weeks since I returned from my hiatus, and I'm still loving every single minute of every single show, guys, especially on the VR gaming front. These last few weeks have been an absolute treasure trove of gaming goodness in VR. It's to the point we're surrounded by such good quality games that it's almost laughable to hear that VR doesn't provide value for the money that you spend. Because let me tell you, it sure as hell has made a pretty damn good convincing argument these last few weeks. Windlands 2, me being late to the party with Beat Saber, something I know you guys enjoyed months ago, I finally got around to, and I've been loving that. And judging by many of you on my friends list, uh, kicking arse on your high scores, so you best be uh, going to check out uh, which of you I've dethroned. And then, of course, Astrobot. <sighs> wow, that's all I'm going to say. We're going to talk more about Astrobot during the VR chat. We're also going to look at some other games, including a title that's come out of Early Access and a hell of a lot to talk about in this week's VR Roundup. But I did want to show you guys my latest purchase. Uh, this is something I'm going to be using in the VR Arcade. Granted, it's not robust arcade quality, but I'm doing more of an executive experience. Okay, it's not high-end either, but I got a really good deal on this, so I'm going to share it with you guys. The, whoops, that's the front, TMX Xbox wheel and pedal combo set. So how I happened upon this is I was at Best Buy and looking at the wheel and pedal options, wanting to purchase one for the VR arcade that I'm going to be opening. And I had to do a double take because there were three of these lined up on the shelf in the Xbox section with price tags of 139 Canadian. The only problem is they weren't on sale and the regular price is 230 Canadian dollars. Well, Best Buy has a little policy about price tags. Uh, if they're incorrect, you get that advertised price on the price tag. And sure enough, I'm not proud of it, but hey man, these are tough times and uh, I got to get a deal where I can get a deal. I got a deal. I saved about 90 bucks on this set. Plus, it's compatible with some really, really cool third party not third party, but rather um, aftermarket accessories that you can purchase. Namely, the three pedal, the add-on shifter, and uh, the non-pro version of the three pedal. The default one is just a two pedal, so you get breaking, breaking gas. But uh, so far, really happy with it. So I'll probably talk about that in a separate show, the VR Arcade one, part two of which is going to be coming at you soon. I've just been having so much fun with VR games. Speaking of which, guys, let's launch into VR Roundup. Uh, and if you at all like this video, please hit that like button. It so helps these videos. And uh, yeah, I'm going to mention it once in a while because I notice it really does help. If you're at all curious about stats, check out the Social Blade. Look at these VR shows the night they come out, the day after. It's pretty impressive how much of a difference it makes. And, of course, leaving comments engaging. So if you have any questions, guys, any comments, good, bad, or indifferent, on the content of this show, leave it in the comment section below. And with that said, guys, grab a snack or bevy of choice, sit back, chillax, and let's take a look at this week's VR Roundup. First up, Dream, the company, has launched their online VR collaboration and productivity tool, also by the same name, Dream. With this, you can create a user account in virtual reality. You're then presented with a virtual keyboard, which you can type at roughly 30 to 40 words per minute, the devs say, maximum. So if you can type faster, well, you're going to be throttled back a little bit. You can then fire up Chrome as the browser of choice and use browser-based options like PowerPoint 
or view items in Dropbox or Google Drive in collaboration with others. Now, unfortunately, no ability to display 3D models as of yet, so 3D work isn't collaborative yet, but the items above mentioned are. Again, PowerPoint, Dropbox, Google Drive, etc. Truth be told, I probably wouldn't have recommended that the rig Kickstarter campaign start like this. Thankfully, they are accommodating the ability to function based on in-game sounds as a default. So even if a dev doesn't specifically SDK more advanced use of the vest, you should still be able to get basic sound haptic feedback using this device. However, it would likely shine with more advanced simulation of things like gunshots using the SDK, but brings up that old attachment rate argument. Well, the device itself packs eight actuators, the devs say, provide silent, harmonic, and powerful tactile sensations. The rig connects via Bluetooth and can last roughly eight hours per charge, a charge taking just over an hour. It will also have the ability to add additional battery packs for even longer sessions. The price likely to be around 750 to 800 US, which is about 35% over the campaign $550 pledge to secure a unit. Okay, so I was kind of thinking what Oh, what do these gloves remind me of? And uh, being Canadian, I figured it out pretty quickly. Haptex, formerly known as Axon VR, and we've talked about these on the old VR News show, they've launched their now called Haptex Gloves development kit targeting industrial grade use. The devices utilize micro pneumatics for detailed haptics and force feedback to individual fingers. Initial feedback matched my hockey gear comparisons in that apparently it hasn't been ideal in terms of the bulk factor, but they have focused on providing realistic feedback per finger, something that's going to cater amazingly well to VR training applications. In fact, probably better than any other product currently available uh, in gear form. There's some non-gear finger tracking options, which I personally think would work a little better. However, that's the strength that they are hitching their wagon to, so more on these guys uh, as news becomes available. The Oculus Go keeps its GPU CPU cool via passive cooling, uh, dissipation essentially of heat, whereas the Oculus Quest is going to be providing active cooling. Now that appears to back up John Carmack's previous statement. He said that they were going to be able to push the Quest Snapdragon that much harder than they could in a mobile phone because there's going to be more air and space available. Well, add in an active cooling fan to the equation. Hopefully not a very loud fan. This thing is going to have to be stealth quiet or it could grate on people. Also confirmation from Oculus that Quest tracking is going to be limited to indoor use. And finally, John Carmack stating that the USB-C port on the Oculus Quest will not be able to transfer gaming data. This is something that they had considered in the past, but opted to not go for this iteration. We touched on these PlayStation VR bundles. Well, I announced them, now they're available. First up, the Creed Rise to Glory and Super Hot VR Bundle. That's a bundle that includes both of those games with controllers. Then you've got the Astrobot Rescue Mission and Moss Bundle without the Move controllers. Steam Workshop is Valve's online store for environmental additions and asset packs for Steam VR Home. And it's also the landing spot for users who play Steam VR games. Valve has added the latest in a line of self-built home environments in the form of this alien dairy farm that they're calling Gulping Goat. It is a fully automated robotic space farm and available to explore via Steam VR Home. The map includes an asset pack with several of the items from the farm available for use including sounds and props. Now, Astrobot has once again revived in me the possibility that VR has with older genres and games. It showed how VR could reimagine platformers even after other companies had already done their take on platformers in VR. 
Well, the farm gets me excited about titles like Harvest Moon or Rune Factory, or if you just play PC games, maybe Sundew Valley rings a bell. But this time in VR, that would be pretty cool. And on the gaming and experience front, where do I start? This is how you do a platformer in VR. I said it during the recording of my Astrobot quick look, but I'm gonna say it again here. Now, during that quick look, I questioned the $39.99 US. I can say upon beating said title, absolutely freaking worth it. I barely scratched the surface in my quick look, so if you're worried about spoilers in that video, don't be. The game goes way beyond what I show into territory that, guys, quite frankly, is freaking amazing. So if you at all like platformers, even just a little bit, and are a fan of VR, you have to give this a try. No video, and I'm gonna say that again, absolutely no video can convey how cool this game is. Next up, Twilight Path from developer Charm Games, known for another title called Form, which fared fairly well in reviews. Twilight Path is best described as a VR fantasy adventure puzzler. The game takes you on an otherworldly journey to meet wandering spirits, enchanted sentries, and mischievous gods all the while using your wits to solve various puzzles. You've got puzzles that focus on restoring ruined structures, others that have you opening sealed passageways, all the while rescuing a host of magical creatures from danger that you stumble upon. Racket Fury Table Tennis covered a couple of episodes ago as a PC VR game coming to PlayStation VR. Well, the PlayStation VR version has finally launched. In it, you can play table tennis against several AI opponents in a futuristic take on table tennis. No multiplayer support yet, but it is planned according to the devs for future versions. The game is available on Sony PlayStation Store for $19.99 US. Soulfar, the dev studio behind InDeath, has released the version that takes InDeath out of early access and into full release. In the game, you face a horde of evil in the higher realms. The game features polished combat that is tough but fair and an, essentially at an almost perfect pace. The game available now for $29.99 US for Rift Vive and Windows HMDs via Steam VR. The other thing I wanted to chat about, guys, is Astrobot. So you're probably hearing a lot of Astrobot uh, coming at you from all kinds of directions. You may not agree with what is being said about Astrobot, but I gotta say, for me, it was just absolute affirmation, proof positive, that VR gaming is heading in the right direction. I thought it was brilliant in a really ironic way that what they did is they took the game mechanics and it was interesting i did an episode of vr roundtable live streamed and i'm adding this post it's probably why my beanie changed color but the argument was that for for gary it reminded him a lot of mario odyssey and regardless of what a lot of people are drawing comparisons to the Mario franchise, me included. But if you'll recall, Nintendo has said on numerous occasions that they don't feel VR translates their strengths, which is gameplay, making gameplay accessible and fun and having you know VR helmets on people's heads, kids, uh, for hours at a time uh, doesn't make sense. And that's where I think the irony comes in a little bit with Astrobot because it showed that not only can you make VR so in tune, you know, with gameplay mechanics where you're really drawing on the virtual reality aspect, you're taking the game mechanics of a game and translating them to VR in a way that shows that statement or those statements to be false. It can 
and did translate well to virtual reality. And I would argue what makes Astrobot so special is the fact that it's in virtual reality. You get lured in at first, and I'll be careful to not throw any spoilers in, guys, but you get lured in at first, you are the viewer, right? You control your Astrobot. You follow along uh, at different varying camera angles. Sometimes you're above, sometimes you're below, or just to the side. Then you become involved in the mechanics, and it's this one-upmanship level after level, world after world, that really sets this game apart. I think um, I've heard it said, and I kind of share this, it may not be my all-time top VR game, but it's absolutely the most fun I've had in VR in a hell of a long time. The game is absolutely magical, but it's up against, and this is why I wanted to chat about it, that age-old issue of marketing in virtual reality, which I've said for the last two years has been essentially piss poor, right? Marketing has been atrocious. How do you market such an awesome game through pancake means? We talked about that in the show too, kiosks. I think this is where those kiosks really would work. Have them set up in shopping malls. Let kids and families try Astrobot. They will absolutely get virtual reality. You might have a few busted VR helms, <laughs> but they will get it and it will definitely sell. I think that's the challenge. I think we all agree it's the game to do it, but if it's up against the same atrocious marketing, will it? That, for me, is the question. So hopefully, and I'm going to try to do my bit when I open the VR arcade uh, and make sure experiences like Astrobot are front and center. Are there negatives to the title? Absolutely, but the positives, for me at least, completely outweigh the negative. So let me know your thoughts, guys, in terms of how would you market something like Astrobot, which is part of the bigger question, which we've been asking these last two years, how can you better market VR? And we'll leave it at that. All right, guys, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you have any questions or throw in your two cents, please do so in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer you back. Guys, have a fantastic weekend and a kick-ass week. And as always, cheers.